I would like to thank Mr. Chairman and Alan for inviting me and the city team for all the arrangements. It's always great to be in Ireland. Uh, I'm coming from Slovenia and maybe just a few words about our university. It's the largest university in the Southeast Europe. Uh, we have uh, 56,000 students, uh, 23 faculties, two academies, and this is our main building. So uh, every time I talk about a project, I see a project uh, as a journey. And if you look at uh, traveling experience, uh, it is the most disturbing as you must go through different checks, x-rays, and controls. And the question is why they are doing that. They are doing that because they want to reduce risks. And how well do we reduce the risks that are embedded into building project documentation? The answer is that we must do a better x-ray of the project documentation. If you look uh, at building projects as they were done in the past, especially in pharmaceutical industry, they actually already use the concept of build it twice, and this concept uh, is nowadays more accessible by using BIM. So what they did, this is an example from Slovenia. Uh, we started to talk about one project, and what they did about uh, 25 years ago, they built a scale model of pharmaceutical company, and they first tested on a scale model and then change the project documentation if some things didn't work. So what we are actually doing now is that we are doing exactly the same thing, but in the digital world. The major concept that we are using in our approach is the concept of reference models and coordination models so that we build separate models of uh, architecture, structure, and MEP systems and put that together into coordination model and we use the same project documentation as it is used on the project side. Uh, related to BIM implementation plan, you can see the top uh, right picture is actually project management book of knowledge approach. So we must initiate, plan, execute, control, and uh, close the job, and we do that in BIM implementation plan. Related to BIM uh, initiation, it's important that you get the right knowledgeable uh, top management or at least mid-management personnel that will support you, and we somehow manage to do that in the frames of the project that, we'll, I, and that I will explain in more detail. Uh, we had the support from the rector of the university as well as we set up the project office with the support from the faculty of architecture and uh, civil engineering and the planning uh, started with detailed analysis of the project documentation and set up of a team that will be able to support the project throughout the life cycle. And uh, at the end, I will show the outcomes, uh, some protocols, and so forth. So there are three important things that must be uh, addressed in any BIM implementation. That is the life cycle, the standards, and the interoperability. I have put that into three different cubes. As we speak about the life cycle, it is always important that we refer to the project life cycle. When do we join with BIM into the building project? What is the uh, use technology within that project? And uh, we need to assure proper interoperability on the technical level, on the semantic level. That means that we understand what we are exchanging and why. And if we work in a uh, broader uh, teamwork setting, it is also important that we assure inter-organizational interoperability. All that requires the development of standards. Standards must be implemented and deployed on the field. 
If we put that together, we get a beam cube that defines many different aspects that are related to the implementation and use of beam in actual projects. And this uh, beam cube provides a kind of framework to analyze and, in, and improve different aspects of beam. I will not go into detail, I would rather go into concrete uh, project development. Uh, in the past, we did uh, many case studies. One of them was a new hospital pediatric clinic where we transformed the as design project documentation to as built using TLS. That was about uh, four years ago, the first experience. So the final goal was to actually prepare as managed beam, that is as built link to asset management software. Somehow uh, the clinic is so big that they were not able to adopt that, but they got really good uh, feedback. Uh, and uh, in the future, we are planning to support uh, these hospital projects with the BIM and also for the BIM facility management. The case study that I will explain today in more detail is the campus project that is currently running in Slovenia. It's about 120 million euro project. Uh, the design uh, was provided by three architects. So we have different styles, different materials, different structures, and of course, different purposes. On the left hand side is new faculty for information sciences. In the middle is so-called connecting building, and on the left uh, is new faculty for chemistry and chemical technology. Uh, altogether, there is uh, 45,000 square meters of the space, plus extra space around, uh, totaling to 50,000 square meters. So how we started? The whole story started about five years ago, but uh, we joined the project team in 2011, at the end of the year, and all the project documentation was done in 2D. But uh, the big issue was, is that documentation properly x-rayed? Will it support the project as it should? So we started the analysis. There were about uh, 2,500 documents, about 1,600 drawings. And based on that, we developed separate models of architecture. So three models for each building. And we did that in several phases at different levels of details. And I will show you some of the experiences from that project. So as I explained before, what we do, we use the coordination model. And how we uh, develop that coordination model is uh, essential. So at the first, uh, we must assure that the model gets the credibility. And that was one of the big issues as we were working on the project so that uh, the models that we developed were somehow authorized by all the involved uh, consultants as well as lead architect and so on. And this is something that must be assured if you want to have a successful <coughs> BIM project. Uh, at the very beginning, we did proper uh, BIM planning. So we defined what we want to achieve with the model, what will be the measure of success, and uh, what is required to match the, uh, the exact requirements of the project. And this is, uh, these are some examples of the models that we developed. On the left-hand side is the building that was on the left-hand side uh, on the previous slide. Uh, on the right top is that middle connecting building. It has really complex geometry in the floor plan, this kind of kidney shape and each floor is turned for three to six degrees. Uh, so architect gave a lot of effort into geometrical studies, but it was really demanding how to put that together because there are 
uh, really massive eight counts columns uh, and each uh, column is a different angle to the horizontal plane as well as to the vertical plane. Okay, what we did, uh, the first uh, we did quantity takeoff to check the tendering documentation as well as to use that quantity takeoff for uh, tenders that were followed up. Uh, we did, uh, once the contract was signed with the contractor, we checked the contractual schedule with the simulation and identified problems. Furthermore, uh, we developed quite detailed constructability studies. Uh, the basic approach is once we have coordination model, we develop constructability study based on detailed human review, not automatic class check. We develop a paper-based uh, report as well as constructability portal that serves for change management. So this is uh, an example how the constructability uh, study works. We somehow uh, identify that we need something uh, on paper that will bridge the gap between paper-based workflow to digital uh, workflow. So we hand it over to all the consul uh, consultants, lead designer, and contractors, uh, paper-based uh, reports on constructability issues, each uh, identify where the problems originate and what must be done. And that was also supported with a constructability portal uh, that enabled easy filtering by axes, by uh, different trades, by different systems, and so on. An important part of this constructability study was a careful review uh, that was shown with this movie, and that resulted uh, in many improvements in the project. Altogether, we identified close to 400 project inconsistencies, uh, around 100 missing or wrong openings. And this is, uh, these are some examples from the constructability study. Uh, throughout the project, we supported uh, the contractor with simulations as they uh, rescheduled, original schedule, we uh, tested again. We have used location-based methods plus simulations. And uh, throughout the project, uh, we were always a little bit ahead of uh, contractors so that we helped them to identify what will go wrong. And there were uh, many mistakes in form works that didn't match uh, late changes in the architectural design and things like that. OK. Um, an important part of the project uh, represents uh, the lab building. There are about 180 labs with all kinds of uh, MEP process piping uh, and uh, advanced uh, HVAC systems uh, that support uh, the laboratories. And uh, what we did, we actually designed uh, laboratory spaces in a way that enabled easier uh, collection of end user requirements and very importantly uh, we used Beam to improve the communication between the end user, the investor, the University of Ljubljana and all the trades within the project. Uh, some examples of other uses of Beam. Uh, initially we did preliminary plan of Beam use but later on we identified uh, additional needs. Uh, there was a need uh, from the European Union to recheck uh, energy uh, analysis of the building. So we have used beam to beam building energy model conversion that enabled quite detailed uh, energy analysis using local climate uh, situation. And I didn't uh, tell before, 85% of the project is financed by EU, and this is the biggest EU-funded project uh, right now into educational facilities. 
So, uh, what was also the problem uh, was uh, that the design was completed in 2009 and in the meantime there was a change of uh, standards and codes. Uh, we had to show uh, that energy classes match the required energy classes from EU and we did quick optimization of building envelope so we changed the windows to uh, triple glazed and some other improvements in isolation material and we used beam to show plastically what is the impact of change. We also developed so-called uh, energy curves for each of the buildings that shows the relationship between exchange of airs, air and uh, consumption of energy. Furthermore, uh, we use some studies that we also cannot do using traditional uh, approach. But uh, an important impact was achieved uh, for the labo uh, laboratory design. We actually used uh, 3D communication that uh, enabled end users uh, to quickly respond to wrong missing items and at the end of the day, we designed each laboratory with all the global systems and how they match locally and requirements for each of the laboratory. And we also used visualization uh, to help end users to envision how the final solution will look like. An important part of our work uh, throughout the construction process was the MEP coordination. Uh, we defined the protocol using IDEP0 diagram. Uh, we involved uh, all the consultants that uh, designed the building as well as contractors and subcontractors. First, uh, we did a careful review using 3D representation and additional metadata. And based on that uh, review, uh, being consultants and as well as contractors uh, proposed changes and these changes were approved using systematic way. Uh, way. And at the end, once the uh, systems were installed, we also supported the project uh, with regular uh, update of as designed to as built models and we have used photo, video as well as PLS scanning. What was also found uh, useful that uh, in the support of MEP contractors we have used 3D representation. This is one example uh, of that crossing uh, kidney shape uh, building. Uh, in the past, they used to have two or three cross sections, but we provided additional 400 cross sections that help uh, installers to install more quickly so that they didn't use their imagination how the ducts go throughout the building. And based on the constructability study, 80% uh, of MEP designs for that particular building were redesigned and uh, representations like that were really found useful on the site. As they installed the system, they could easily look up and see if the ducts go <coughs> the way it should be. We have also used, uh, as we have rendered uh, these images, the same <coughs> angle you get from a photograph uh, from a camera, so that we could easily match if you stand on the same uh, place on the physical side and uh, compare that render, you get quick match. So this is an example of additional cross-section. What we also uh, did, we supported uh, the construction site, subcontractors for MEP systems with uh, the model with predefined views. They could also uh, select some views and make comments and send that back to us and we communicated that with the lead designer. And that was found really useful, especially the part uh, related to the equipment. 
that will be finally installed. Uh, by the way, uh, the tendering process for technological equipment uh, for the building uh, is now in the second round. The first time it was cancelled due to all the complaints and we have huge problems with the public procurement processes. And uh, this uh, particular representation really helped uh, contractors and subcontractors to envision how they must uh, install all the piping because uh, in the past they were not able to see what will be there, they just used the uh, drawings they got. So what we also did, we regularly checked uh, different spots that were critical. On the right hand side uh, you can see an example, there were 400 uh, Pipe, uh, pipes that had to be removed because they didn't take into account our constructability study. Uh, in the process of construction, we do regular updates. Here you can see our guy, Bustian, he's just working on the updates of the model. Uh, we use uh, three different levels. First, we use photographs, then we use videos, and if needed, we also use uh, terrestrial laser scanning to update the models. What we also do, we do pan panoramic photographs of us builds uh, on the construction site, so it's really easy to uh, see what is actually done and when. Uh, there was an example first of the X crossing building and now you can see the laboratory and using the interface of the TLS you can also measure and that will be used later on by the installers. Uh, we used uh, TLS outside and inside the building. Uh, what we are trying to do all the time is that we are catching up what is done on the side and we update the model. You can see that on the right hand side, on the, uh, on the left hand side, on the right hand side, you can see a TLS. Uh, this uh, kidney shaped building has double facade uh, and it was quite complex process of measurements for the subcontractors for glass facade on the outside and this is still an ongoing process. An important part uh, of the Faculty of Chemistry and Chemical Technology is uh, the piping system and that must match only, not only architectural elements but all the technological equipment. So what we did, uh, and you can see that on the right hand side, is the laser scanning and from that laser scanning we developed the cloud-based model as well as we took the regional as designed model and we get quick comparisons so that we can see the differences between the heights as they were designed and they, as they were built as well as uh, changes that will affect the patterns on the lower ceilings and things like that. And that was found very useful. So at the end we get good as built here you can see an example of uh, what it happens if you don't take into account constructability study. What we have provided about half of the year now already, that was actually in January 2013, we identified some clashes, I mentioned before, 100 of them, and one of them was not solved in the redesign, so they had to drill new, new holes and you can see they mark on the physical beam and that costed 16,000 euros. And at the end, you can, in the middle, uh, you can also see that they missed one hole for the ducts for HVAC system, again, a couple of thousands of euros. So you can really save the money with the approach. Okay. So, uh, regular checks, uh, credible models, uh, good coordination with the uh, lead designer and all the consultants and later on with main contractors and subcontractors is a key to success in BIM. 
and uh, they really like the models and uh, it was quite massive work. Uh, as I mentioned, 180 labs. Uh, we also prepared the tendering documentation that was for the first time in 3D linked to 2D representations and all the specifications so that you can open as a book and you have direct relationship what is what and you can actually see and that really helped the process and uh, the end result was very successful. The biggest part uh, in that chemistry is the MEP system that is really massive and we put a lot of effort to develop a good MEP model. How much time do I have? Okay. So uh, at the end, all these will have to be managed. So uh, we are also uh, working into the direction of uh, being facility management. Uh, what we really like is the concept of maintenance unit that defines form function behavior. And uh, this will be used to be managed outside and inside. And we are aware that in the lifetime of a project, the total cost of building ownership uh, is five times bigger than the investment itself. Therefore, we started to study different standards uh, and use the whole building life cycle procedures. We have also developed some of the some models of the existing buildings of the university. Altogether, we have 300 <coughs> buildings, so more or less not all will be modeled, but some important ones for sure. And there are two important standards uh, that should be taken into account. The first one is EU standard that defines uh, strategic, technical, and operational management standards for facility management. This is EN 15.221 that uses Plan, Do, Check, Act uh, procedure. And the second one is COBE. And right now, we are just working on COBE implementation for the buildings I have just shown. And it's a massive documentation of all the certificates that we are currently scanning and putting uh, all the organization of the asset management part uh, linked to being in proper place. So what uh, we would like to achieve is to have total cost of building ownership <coughs> measurement units uh, in terms of economical, maintenance, operational factors, as well as in terms of sustainability factors. So what is the way forward that we see with our implementation? Uh, we already, ha already have in place GIS system that will be linked to asset management and in part also the model so that we, we will have a centralized repository of the university buildings. Uh, university buildings are spread all over the city we have some smaller campus places, but in general, we are not like Stanford that has all the buildings at one spot. Okay, so what we did, uh, we synchronized all the public uh, registry data with local data. We also digitized some of the existing buildings, linked these buildings with asset management software so that we have direct connectivity between BIM elements and asset management elements and internal inventory system. Here you can see uh, our faculty, our main building, and uh, if somebody was already in Ljubljana, uh, would notice that this is quite exact representation. And all that is linked to asset management uh, that is uh, gradually improving and getting more details. And uh, even if you use uh, BIM for existing buildings, there are many potential potentials, especially for refurbishment, energy improvement. And at the end, we plan to have a centralized data and maintenance management system that will link traditional project documentation, 
BIM project documentation and asset management uh, software to improve utilization, condition, and value of the University of Ljubljana buildings. We already have predefined some reports. And at the end, uh, what makes a success of uh, BIM is to develop really up-to-date, trustworthy models. And these models uh, should be developed in a way uh, to use the opportunity for the whole life cycle of the building, the opportunity of BIM. And uh, right now, uh, this building is about to be handed over uh, in April, May the latest. So uh, CNS system uh, is already in place. Uh, we are, as I explained before, populating the data with COVID-related stuff, and it was a good experience, uh, experience, and we already started to work on a new project for medical faculty. Thank you very much. As Susanna said, if there are any quick questions that can't wait, uh, you might, um, um, Tom will take them now before we move on to the next speaker. Thank you. There's one here. Yeah, Tomo, it, 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 it appears that the university or your team had quite a uh, central role to play on the project. Actually, Can you just explain that. Um, I didn't go into detail, uh, details of organization. Uh, the project as a whole was awarded by three partners, and each of these three partners has its own subcontractors. And one of the partners is also MEP contractor. And in addition to that, we have the project office that is supported by the rectorate, and we work directly with the project office. So, uh, in the initial phase, uh, we had quite central role, as we had uh, had to improve the project documentation that wasn't done. I'm just intrigued to know that on site, did the university have an office? Support the supply chain in using the technology. Yeah, so we have a container. Uh, we have a container on site. We have regular coordination meetings once right. per week, and if needed, also uh, at the end of the week. So we are present there all the time during the duration of the project. 